One thing I always say about pets, pets that we love or whatever, everything that you get from them every day, at the end you have to give it all back. And that kills me. We just lost Lilith. And uh, we filmed, we actually, New Hampshire Chronicle filmed animals and they filmed Lilith. And I noticed on Thursday, she was just not her perky self without going into all the details, but uh, I noticed her eye had started to swell and she was just not as vibrant. She was like 60%. So she had that problem with her eye and uh, I, started, uh, I started treating that with septazidine, thinking something bacterial because we don't have a lot to go on. Snakes or reptiles are very secretive when there's problems. The next day, she was doing even worse. It was, it was pretty unbelievable. Uh, from being you know, this vibrant animal that's been growing great, she was about two kilograms, no, excuse me, one kilogram when we got her, and she was about 3.1, 3.2 kilograms when she just passed. There was nothing I could do to fix it. Uh, and Monday, she died. Horrible days, horrible week after. And uh, I was traumatized. I'm still traumatized. I gave myself, I rubbed something in my eye and it hurt my eye and gave myself a little infection and I'm, I'm just not doing well I'm under the weather. So what I did, decided to go to my vets and I'm like, all right, I need, I need you guys to do a, a necropsy. I need to understand, but I don't want to do the necropsy because I need, I just need to, to know, but I need somebody else's opinion. They're, they're more clinical. They've certainly just way more knowledge in this and there's a lot of emotions attached to this. But we arranged it. So we actually had two vets do this necropsy. Uh, you know, more minds, the better. And I had believed that Lilith was impacted because I, I would give things like fluids and then I was noticing she was passing urea and urates or, and some like yellow, yellow brown urine and I was like, wow, that doesn't look good. But I noticed that there was no stool. So I started palpating her down by, you know, probably her large intestine where it, it meets her colon, I guess. And I was, I was feeling the area and I could feel something, but she wasn't passing anything. And then I tried to do, um, you know, a, a simple non-invasive uh, enema, just using lactated ringers, trying to get fluid in there and see if I could get anything up. I was unsuccessful. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, panicking. What do you do? And you really don't have any help. There's, there's, you're on your own, uh, but there's, as the story plays out, it's really, it gets very interesting. They, they begin the necropsy and first thing they do is we, we x-ray her. And they notice right off the bat, the, um, her face. And so I, you know, they knew about the eye thing and how we had, I don't know if it was back almost, almost a year ago and last February, she had the problem with a sudden eye thing where she one day we just noticed her eye was swollen. The bone, I can't remember right now because it's just my brain. I, I don't know the name of the bone. I think it was the P. It goes underneath the eye and it had been broken. It was really calcified. Uh, so you know, like noticeably different than the other. So actually probably what the story would be is when she was still in Java, going through hands or whoever had her and there was video of her being pretty sweet and when I got her she was demented she was like none of my other cobras she just so the most unreasonable probably what happened was over there you could see it was broken so it was, it was a pretty good injury that probably caused a lot of pain and when I got her, I don't know if the injury was recent or whatever, but it had not probably healed and caused her to be aggro, maybe how her, she was treated or the pain or whatever. I couldn't recognize any of that. She, I just didn't know it. So they, they do a uh, clinical necropsy where you open her essentially to view all of her internals. 
and it was very evident. She had visceral gout. Gout is the body is unable to process urates. Like, so you could take like a bearded dragon or let's say have an iguana. So we have a natural herbivore that maybe 11% of its diet is vegetable based proteins. And that can lead to, you know, animal being healthy. But if I go and give that iguana cat food or dog food or kibbles and bits or whatever, all this animal based protein, that can cause a problem and, and the animal cannot, it's not designed to manage that level of protein and it overwhelms the kidney function, the renal system and it fails and you get this crystallization, you get all these urates and the urates will start occurring throughout the body. So I, now this shouldn't be this much crystal, it should look more like, more like none of this. Well, look at the other one, look at the other kidney. Yeah. So she was not managing her urates, possibly? Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, is she has two kidneys. Yeah, yes. so it shouldn't so have been. So why, why? One looks, one. yeah, why is one just, that's I keep thinking it looks infected, but I, d I don't know. That's what I was saying about the idea that, like, when you asked yeah. about the gastrointestinal tract, yeah. there should be, you know, it shouldn't be, you would get sick, you know, but you wouldn't die yeah. immediately. Wherever it started in Lilith, uh, the, the vets thought probably likely in the heart because her heart is covered in little, I don't know if you want to call them lesions, but there's all these areas of urates. And it's all over her heart, opening up her heart and her aorta and all that. It's all crystallized urates and it feels like sand and all throughout her liver. See the white little mark there. Yeah, from her heart. That's from her article. Oh my God. Her atrium. Look at yeah, that. and look at the size look. of it there. I don't know how Greg feels, but there are lots of diseases in animals that we call an acute on chronic presentation. So they're diseases that are chronically going on, and then something tips them over the edge, and they become and they uh, they kind of present as a yeah. acute thing. One of the biggest things is intervertebral disc disease. Look! Look at this. But maybe she was compensating. I mean, I can feel the mineralization. The, the mineralization yeah. in wow! Her. Then then I'm, that's doomed. Yeah. I can't treat this all attached to the outside of the stomach. The intestines are little bits of urates. Uh, it, it was incredible. And her kidneys, you know, urates, everything. So everything was going bad. So probably what likely how this works, she initially had a fracture in the face and that caused the thickening of this bone as the bone was healing. And she was probably last February experiencing a level of uh, she, her heart, so her cardiovascular system was challenged. So if we have somebody that has heart disease and you know they get swollen, their legs swell up, you get edema. So their, their body is not able to, to manage fluids and the, the fluids almost pull. So they, their feet swell up, they can't even fit in their shoes, whatever. And these are all signs of heart disease. Well, how does that look on a snake? Well, I noticed one thing with Lilith when we were dealing with it, she would get these areas on her side that just seemed kind of like soft. And now what those, I realize what they are is, this is edema. So what she was doing, so if you look in the necropsy, as they're performing the necropsy, there is so much fluid in her, it's unbelievable. I know, you're gonna get, now why is there so much fluid up here? Why? That's insane. Building up fluid, you would have noticed it, you know? Like this had to be like overnight when you couldn't see her, her heart failed. Yes. Her lungs filled with fluid and yes. it happens a lot. Uh, oh, sweetheart, I'm so sorry. Wow, this is, this is look, oh, overwhelming. It's just so much was going wrong. Well, it's all because of one cause. Which could be, got... I'm wondering if it's inherited like you were talking about with these breeds that are yeah. so, you know, Lucism yeah, and if there's yeah. a meta like a metabolic defect. So quite likely, I, what I was thinking, it could have been a parasite originally or whatever, but she was accumulating this fluid under her eye because her heart was being challenged, her cardiovascular system was being challenged, all of her internal organs were already starting to fail. And, uh, you know, when, when you're a vet and you're looking at this stuff, you have to make 
very educated guesses and uh, discern what you think is realistic. So someone remind me, what was going on with her eye though? That was what this all started with, right? Well, I think she had a, I, again, my, if I had to make up a story, my story would be she had a worm up here yeah, or something. She got some panophthalmitis, but not infectious. It was a mechanical yes. obstruction caused by a deposition of urate. Oh. This, this whole eye problem is deposition of, of uh, a manifestation of the, of the gout. I found a paper from the Thai Veterinary Journal from 2012 in a monocellic cobra. Um, removal, so physical exam revealed the palpable mass in the Salomic cavity, of which radio radiographic examination was suspicious of an, as an obstruction of large intestine by a foreign body. Removal of the foreign body through the cloaca was attempted by enema and digital manipulation. Just like what I did. Six successful yes. exam, yeah. Thereafter, an exploratory, was surgery, or exploratory surgery was performed and, and revealed an abnormality only in the left kidney that was compressing the large intestine. <clears throat> so it's exactly what you tried to do, but you just had two kidneys instead of one. Right, and, and like you said, it's almost like you said gout is bad luck. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how Greg feels, but I feel like you and I have seen a few gout cases where... No, it's just bad luck. This is genetics. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that she's so rare. There's <laughs> nothing here that you did Thank wrong. You. This is... That's, that's, this that's is what I'm trying to understand is because yep. I, I set her up. She's grown terrifically. Yep. Yep. She's done super well, yep. and then it was just something pushed yep. her over a cliff. Yeah. And And if I remember right, these these secretions of, of, are called TOFI. And they feel that this has probably been going on for quite a while. This is a long-term problem. It's probably likely it's genetic. Uh, and they said it is what they call, they said it is bad luck. That's what they said. That's You have to pretty much sum it up to bad luck. So it's not like I did something like... Uh, I fed her something too high protein or I wasn't giving her water or anything like that. It was, she is, is challenged. It's probably because of leucism and there might be uh, this genetic failure because there's been, as I know, there was two leucistic baby king cobras just this past season and two and one, I think. And I know the two are dead I don't know about the one we have then there was a wild male and I think it's safe to assume that that's dead uh, so Lilith was the only one I would say the only viewable one if this is a genetic thing this means that the world is not destined to have blue eye leucistic king cobras because there might be a mutant gene or anomaly or a, a health uh, gene that that there's a consequence how they're managing urates. Uh, I know Lucifer, which is supposed to be a het, leucistic, I had a lot of challenges with Lucifer. And it is my understanding that the other litter mates to Lucifer have never exactly thrived. This can happen to any snake, anybody. Uh, it was non-treatable, absolutely non-treatable. It's amazing that she actually lived as long as she did, considering what she's probably been going through. Lilith would sometimes eat meals that, you know, by all standards of my other King Cobras were was totally acceptable, and sometimes she'd throw up part of that meal. Like I was overwhelming her. If I gave her too much food, it's too much for them to process, too much for her to process. So she was unable to do that. So. Maybe you get like pancreatitis, you know, your stomach gets just overwhelmed, but she would throw up part of that. So I would start managing her meals, smaller meals, a little bit more frequent, but I couldn't just like give her like a big kick butt frozen snake and expect no, uh, you know, no problems. So I was always doing smaller, smaller stuff. And a couple times she had some rodents wrapped in snake skin, but pretty much her, her diet was snakes. One thing that was interesting, when we opened her up, so Lilith was just about nine foot. She, her ovum, she did not have ovum like most snakes would, uh, that I would expect. She didn't have ovum because her, her function and her, just her, 
wellness was not of a you know acceptable level so the body never uh, even started going into a reproductive state ever even though I think pros possibly she she was uh, big enough keeping keeping animals breeding animals the, the realistic side of it is mortality user error husbandry failures my mistakes uh, plus a whole bunch of things were all out of your control will I ever have closure on this no because it's Lilith and it and my heart is broken and uh, and generally I wouldn't even do a video like this Donnie feels everybody knows Lilith tell you uh, I'm just gonna do this why it's it's fresh because what I after I'm done with this I don't want to talk about Lilith I have to stick it in another room and shut the door and go that was a really great creature in my life and I don't have the the joy of ever getting to ever enjoy her again thank you for being interested um, I really don't want to talk about it again because my heart's broken and uh, I am uh, I don't I don't I internalize a lot of stuff so I don't show a lot of stuff but this this has broken me I literally don't feel like doing nerd anymore I'm this is horrible you good yeah yeah